There's got to be another way. What is this? Hmm. Thanks, Jason. Let's set. All right. I'll be honest with you guys. I have certain deadlines to complete every week for Hurricane X, and it's so hard for me to manage household work while I'm in the middle of completing something important for the channel. I do work from home, which is everyone's dream, right? Not so fast. Realistically speaking, I do have to take care of some work in the house and one of them includes vacuuming. Our 20 year old vacuum cleaner did serve us quite well and I thought that my household tasks were being accomplished until last week when Dyson sent me out the Robot 360i vacuum cleaner and it changed the story. Not only did I realize that I was wasting too much time cleaning this place, but my old vacuum cleaner wasn't quite doing the job that I expected it was. The Darkbase 900 may be the most innovative case of the year with a built-in Qi charger, interior lighting, tempered glass that can be installed on either side, and a fully modular interior that can be inverted if you so desire. Be quiet. Stepping up their game, check it out in the description below. Meet the Dyson 360i, a robot vacuum cleaner that's equipped with a 360 degree camera and a lot of extra goodies that I'll get to in a moment. It's supposed to compete and even surpass the Nidos and Roombas of this world, but it does so at somewhat staggering price of $1,300. Dyson products are not never inexpensive, but in many cases, regardless of whether it's a V8 Animal or the DX78 multi-floor technological innovation takes center stage, these are premium products, but a pocket full of patents has allowed Dyson to remain around for the better part of 20 years without missing a beat. In that time, Dyson has arguably changed the way we look at performance of vacuums. Now they're turning their eye to semi-autonomous vacuums, uh, there are some understandably high expectations, but will the 360i be the best robot vacuum cleaner out there? Let's find out. A short disclaimer, I have never used a robot vacuum cleaner, so whatever I'm sharing here, whether that's positive or negative, is solely coming from my experience. So if you guys have any suggestions or alternatives, definitely leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to check them out. I'm approaching this blind as a first time user of a robotic vacuum cleaner and boy am I excited. I won't get into the technical details either so think of this as a first time user experience rather than a full technical review. Alright, let's begin with the setup process. It's actually pretty straightforward. You get an adjustable docking station which gets plugged into the wall. You can plug the cable into either side of the dock depending on the location of your socket which is very thoughtful. Once the 360i is plugged in, you'll notice a blue LED power indicator on the dock. Right below is where you'll find two large contact points for power to pass through. And when you place the robot with the clear bin facing the wall, the battery light located on the power button of the robot starts to pulsate and it will turn solid when fully charged. While that's charging, prepare the room accordingly. Don't leave any cables, paper, magazines, bags, etc. on the floor. Make sure that there's at least 50 centimeters of clearance around the robot so the camera can track certain points right away before it starts to undock itself. Dyson recommends you to provide adequate lighting for the robot to navigate around since its sensors work best in full lit conditions. It makes sense because the camera sensor is small, making it hard to see in low light environments. However, I tried using this robot in the night with normal room lighting, and while it did take a lot longer to clean than the average cleaning time during the day, its task was still completed to my satisfaction. So how does this robot perform? Uh, does the suction power work really well? Does it really save you time? Um, how easy is it to clear the bin? And what's the experience like owning one of these? I just have one answer to all these questions. It's fantastic. Let me elaborate. 
Dyson has implemented a new digital motor V2 that's energy efficient and spins at up to 78,000 RPM, which is ridiculously fast and powerful enough to suck up most dirt. It's a 100 watt motor that runs off the lithium ion battery, which gets recharged through the dock. The brush bar has the same design as what their full size machines offer. This includes the carbon fiber elements along with nylon bristles to drive deep into the carpet to suck up the dirt. The brush bars span across the unit in order to cover as much of surface area as possible, including the edges. The 360i navigates around with on continuous tracks, and according to Dyson, this was implemented because using wheels would have yielded less traction and inconsistent speeds. There's also a complimentary app called Dyson Link, and once you have it paired up with your phone, whether that's Android or iOS, you can use it to schedule cleaning runs, view a visual map of previous cleaning sessions, along with the time it took to clean, as well as the area it covered. This is always a welcome feature since it grants a visual indicator about how well the vacuum performed. There's a separate product guide if you need to learn a bit more about the robot, as well as troubleshooting section 2. The Dyson 360i's firmware gets updated automatically when it's connected to Wi-Fi, but if you want to do it manually, there is a USB port behind the post filter and you can grab the latest firmware directly from Dyson's website and install it via a flash drive. I do want to point out that the robot's functionality doesn't depend on Wi-Fi performance. Uh, it's designed to function independently of any wireless connection. The Wi-Fi feature is just an extension to the 360i's user experience. Now my phone is connected to a 5G network 99% of the time, but unfortunately the robot only picks up 2.4 GHz bands. So you'll need to connect your phone to a 2.4 GHz network band to pair it and utilize the features of the app. Just remember when pairing, place the robot as close as possible to the router. This is to ensure that the unit picks up a strong signal right from the get-go. I started the cleaning process with my office. The space was well lit. I followed the tips that I mentioned previously and I set it to run an automatic path. The results were outstanding. I was curious enough to see it move around my space, plus the two obstacle detecting sensors at the front do a really good job preventing from any crashes, even with low table legs. And judging from the footage, Dyson's first attempt at an automatic vacuum pretty much covered the whole studio. When you look at the map, the empty dots represent the obstacles, and it picked those out perfectly. If the battery is starting to run out, the 360i finds its way back to the dock, starts to recharge again, and then resumes back to addressing the uncleaned areas. If something gets into the brush bar, your phone will receive a notification, and it's just a matter of removing the debris and pressing the resume button. My top floor was covered after a single recharge, and that includes the other two bedrooms plus the hallway, and the same story applies in my living room too. I did set up the dock at a different location since my office is upstairs, and there's no way for the robot to climb down and clean the rest of the household. The best part is that once the cleaning process is complete, the camera sensor erases the data and resets its memory. So no matter where you set the docking station, it thinks that it's cleaning a new space. Emptying the clear bin was a simple process too. Once you press the cyclone pack release button, the bin comes out, lift the cyclone out and clear the dust. And as you can see, yeah, my old vacuum wasn't working that great. If you want to remove any debris on the brush bar, you can use a coin to turn the brush bar fastener and slide it out gently. There's only one thing I can complain about the Dyson 360i, and that's the time it takes to clean a certain space. According to Dyson, it takes 2 hours and 45 minutes to charge the unit, and the runtime is roughly expected to be 45 minutes. I'm not sure how this compares to the competition like the Roomba from iRobot or the BotVac from Neato. Uh, if I were to manually clean the space with a modern high-tech vacuum, I'd probably get the whole floor done in 20 to 30 minutes. Luckily, this can work while I'm filming. If not, we'd have a problem. This is not a replacement for your existing vacuum cleaner. It won't clean the stairs or get extreme corners or baseboard, but what it can do is clean your surroundings by taking its own time and it does its job really well. With the power Dyson is known for and the intelligence of a good robot vacuum, it can certainly save you some time. There's definitely a hefty price tag on this and I just can't justify spending that much on it compared to the offerings from iRobot or Neato because I haven't tried them yet. It's not the perfect robot cleaner, but it may be the best one out there from my first time perspective. Well, there you have it. Those are my thoughts and experience with the Dyson 360i robot vacuum cleaner. 
um, I can confidently go out for a business meeting or stay home focused on work while this little bad boy takes care of cleaning the rest of the house. I still have to go clean those stairs though before mom starts yelling at me. But guys, thank you so much for watching and definitely leave your thoughts on whether or not robot vacuum cleaners are useful and I will make sure to check them out. I'm Ibar with Harbor Connects and we'll see you in the next one.